Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jim Carrey, and how are you this evening? All righty then. I grew up in Canada. Is there anybody here from Canada? <laughs> You know, I used to get really upset when I told people where I came from down in Los Angeles because I always got the same response. Canada? Wow. <laughs> Must have been cold. <laughs> now I just go along with them. Yes, Canada. It was a frozen, hostile wasteland. And there was much work to be done if we were to survive the elements. After boring a hole through the ice to find food, my good friend Nantuck and I would build an igloo to protect ourselves from polar bears and flying hockey pucks. Then we would drink a lot of beer. And when Nantuck was ready, he would tell me the story of the great moose who said to the little squirrel, Hey, Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. <laughs> And I feel good, really good, excellent, super. I just want to go, 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 go. I think those subliminal motivation tapes are starting to make a difference. Yeah, that's right, I listen to motivational tapes. Think I want to get stuck in this dead end job? No, sorry, not me! I want to do something wonderful. I want to be one of those gospel singers on the PTL club. Because those guys are just happy no matter what. I think I saw him on the hill the other day. I think I saw him when I watched the children play. But when I opened up my voice to sing in breaks, he ran away, ran away. Only my singing made sweet Jesus run away. Made the good Lord. Imagine if you could actually be that happy. That would be powerful, man. 
people would be tunneling under the street to avoid you. They'd go, oh, man. Is that happy guy still out there? Honey, looks like I'm gonna be late again. No, it's the happy guy. He's right beside the car, I can't get near it. Of course, if I wanted to be that happy, I'd have to forget all of my problems. And the only time I forget all my problems is when I'm right smack dab in the middle of a sexual orgasm. So I have them as often as I can. I'm having one right now. <laughs> Ever have one of those really smooth orgasms? Turns you into Elvis? <laughs> I think that's how Elvis got that way, actually. But that's my only escape, you know? Sure, I could go on a vacation, but I'd still be thinking about what I gotta do when I come home. See, to me, an orgasm is like a mini vacation. But it's better because you can't think about anything when you're having one. Oh man, I'm way behind in the rent. <laughs> You know? But for 30 seconds, man, you're free. All you can think about is, what the hell am I going to grab onto? <laughs> Gee, I hope the person I'm with doesn't do anything stupid like move. <laughs> you ever been with somebody who wanted to just keep on moving? I used to keep a brick under my pillow for people like that. <laughs> it's over, let it go! We won't go out with her again. Oh. That's the only time. That's the only time I'm really, truly free. The rest of the time, I sit around and I worry about the stupidest things. The stupid things. Ideas. Like, what would you do if you found out your mom and dad went to hell? Wouldn't that just ruin the rest of your life? You'd be walking around, they taught me everything I know. <laughs> I even look like them! Of course, my mom would drive the devil crazy if she ever went to hell. She'd spend eternity going, something's burning. I can smell it! My mom could always smell something burning, man. I spent half my childhood feeling the walls for hot spots. Nine times out of ten, it was my father. <laughs> See, like a lot of smokers, his favorite cigarette of the day was that one right after dinner, you know? During his nap. <laughs> Fun watching him wake up, though. <gasps> Don't do that. Drop and roll, Dad! <laughs> I just worry too much, though. I don't know. Maybe there is nothing to worry about. Maybe, maybe there's no actual place called hell. Maybe hell is having to listen to our grandparents breathe through their nose when they're eating a sandwich. Get that humming thing. It's not a meal, it's a struggle for life itself. Mm. I think I'll make another one. No! <laughs> we'll be good. Here's a scary concept, though. Getting old. <whistles> you can't do that. You gotta kiss that stuff goodbye, man. I just wanna keep challenging myself, you know? I don't wanna become the, the reminiscing guy. 
you know, people run into at bars and stuff, can always tell how boring their life is by how far back they have to reach for glory. They're like, Remember. <laughs> Remember how fast I used to be when I was a sperm? <laughs> I'll never forget the day of the big race. There were millions of us in the field, but I beat them off to fertilize that egg, mister. Back in the cervix, I was semen first class. <laughs> I don't want to be like that. Uh, see, for me, for me, Jimmy Stewart is the kind of guy that I'd love to be. Man. It's very difficult to be that, though, you know? I mean, he's just kind of up here somewhere. And I just want, I love him, man. It's, he's a great example of somebody who's had an incredibly productive life. It seems like no matter what happens, no matter how bad things get, Jimmy Stewart can look at it in a positive way. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to have ourselves a nuclear holocaust. <laughs> Look at that mushroom cloud. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? And, and, and the amazing thing to me is that the, something so magnificent, <laughs> colorful, could just melt your face right off. <laughs> That's positive energy, you know? You gotta look death right in the face. That's what Jimmy Stewart would do. Now, hi, Mr. Duck, you, you look like you could use some soap. <laughs> I want to be like that, man. Maybe I will be. Maybe someday after I'm finished singing the gospel. I'll go even further and become a real holy man. And I'm not talking about the kind of holy man you see on TV, those TV evangelists. They're not holy men. They're just ambitious. I saw one guy who was so ambitious, he actually became jealous of the Lord. You could tell it came out halfway through the sermon. He said, when I was a child, I wanted to be the savior of the world. Then they told me that Jesus was the son of God and I realized it's all who you know. Very petty, petty people. You know? You can't be like that if you want to be a holy man. And you've got to be sure of yourself, too. When you make a decision, you cannot waver in any way. You've got to stick with it. You never see Gandhi during a hunger strike sneaking into the kitchen in the middle of the night. <laughs> Gandhi, what are you doing down here? Um, I thought I heard a prowler. <laughs> And I was going to eat him over the head with this giant bowl of potato salad. <laughs> he would never put himself in that position, you know? <laughs> and you gotta control your temper constantly, you know? You cannot fly off the handle at any moment. You gotta be right in the center. You know, like Jesus was very composed his whole life. I mean, right up to the end. If that was me, I'd be up there going, <laughs> Great! Just beautiful! You guys are going to get it. <laughs> Wait till my father hears about it. That'd be a whole different book, man. Then there are those weird impulses we get constantly, you know? We have to fight them off every day of our lives. <laughs> Those mad little you know, impulses we get, and everybody gets them too. Like you'll be with a friend, it could be your best friend in the whole world, he's standing about two feet away talking to you, and you're thinking, my goodness, I could just fire out and hit him right now. 
he would never expect it. <laughs> See, madness is never that far away. It's as close as saying yes to the wrong impulse. The people who stay sane are the people who can make those quick decisions. Should I stick my fingers into the fan? Or leave the room right now? Should I run the blade of this razor across my tongue? Or just finish shaving and move away from the sink? Come on, you're right there! You just go, <laughs> but you don't, because luckily, most of us have that little voice inside our head that says, Uh, uh, uh. Turning the car into oncoming traffic is counterproductive! <laughs> Imagine if we didn't have that voice, man. I wouldn't even be here right now. I'd be in the shark tank at SeaWorld. <laughs> he's got my legs, he's got my legs! <laughs> We'd be apologizing till the end of time. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Sorry, man. You guys enjoying the show? <laughs> wow, excuse me, jeez. Sorry about that, it just came into my head and I made a decision, I don't know. It's a... Uh... I hate to turn my back on the audience, I really do. I think nine out of ten of the worst impulses we get, though, are when we're behind the wheel of a car, you know? That's why I don't think it's a good idea to carry a gun in the glove compartment. Because chances are, if it's there, sooner or later, you're going to use it. Of course, then again, what are you going to do if somebody cuts you off on the freeway? <laughs> Just let them go? <laughs> well, you pretty much have to shoot them, you know? Otherwise, they won't learn nothing. <laughs> or, say, all of a sudden you have to go on a real killing spree and all you have is a knife. <laughs> well, after a couple of people, your arm is aching. You have to switch hands, then you look like a girl. <laughs> Stop laughing and die, boy! Who needs that kind of aggravation, man? And there are automatic weapons on sale. <laughs> That's why a lot of my friends are taking martial arts classes and stuff like that, which I think is a really good idea. Anybody into martial arts here? I think it's a good idea to know how to defend yourself, though. I really do. I just wish the people who took martial arts would master the technique before they go around showing it off. Because <laughs> it's really annoying when they come up to you and go, Hey, man, I just learned this incredible new move in karate today. But you gotta come at me like this. <laughs> Gee, is there anything I could do to make it easier for you? And maybe I could put my head under the back wheel of your car. Hey! I'm a mugger! Get me in the groin and pull my eyes out! That's how it goes down in the street. That's how it goes down, man. Give me your money. No! All right, then, I'm going to have to stab you. With my right hand in a lunging fashion. Try to keep your weight on the back leg. <laughs> what world is this? What wonderful world. <laughs> Gee, he does it all. <laughs> I don't think uh, we'd need any of this stuff if we could just communicate to each other. <laughs> of course, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to find some kind of language that everyone understood. Myself, I think that's music. I happen to love it. I 
to sing like Michael Bolton and something just popped in his head. That guy tries really hard, doesn't he? No, he puts a lot into a song, come on. <laughs> he is 99% effort, that man. Concerts. By the end of it, he'd have a big bubble on his head. <laughs> they want an encore. Cut me! <laughs> I love the way he sings. I'm just afraid for him, that's all. <laughs> and we should open up the parameters of the music we listen to. You know, like it really bothers me that the people in this country don't know about the incredible pop music coming out of the Middle East right now. <laughs> I'd like to be the one to bring it to the West. Come on, clap your hands, I'll do one of the song. ourselves in their shoes for a change. Wake up in the morning, pick the sand out of your teeth, <laughs> turn on that radio dial. Next on Libya Rap, DJ Jazzy Mahanubar <laughs> and the Fresh Ruffs on Johnny. <laughs> but first, a word from our hostage. Communication. Hardest thing in the world. You know, I can look at you guys, I can communicate to you all night, but one-on-one, -on -one, I'm terrible. <laughs> Just there's certain things about communicating that really bother me. You know? Like whenever I meet somebody new, I say, Hi! How are you? <laughs> Most of the time when people hear that, they'll say something like, Good, and yourself? <laughs> or fine, thank you very much. But sometimes they like to surprise you. I've got no dream, man. I'm all dead inside. <laughs> I'm sorry, wrong answer, but thank you for playing. <laughs> and if I'm worried about something, I don't even want to leave my house anymore. Because I know there's five people waiting out there somewhere just to ask me that question. Hey, Jim, how are you? <laughs> and I go, really good. Please look away. <laughs> danger, danger. I should change the response or something, you know? How am I? Gee, I don't know. Let me check. <coughs> I'd like to do a few more tests. Thank you. The weird thing is, though, we've gotten so used to hearing this, hi, how are you, that if somebody doesn't say it, we answer it anyway. Hi, Bob. Good, and you? <laughs> then the conversation goes nowhere because all you can hear is that voice in your head going, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> he thinks you're an idiot. <laughs> He's going to tell everyone. Kill him. <laughs> kill him. <laughs> and you
then you have to make one of those decisions again, you know? <sighs> See, I think body language is the communication of the future. <laughs> For instance, if you stand like this, it means, hey girls, I'm single and I have a curvature of the spine. <laughs> And guys, seriously, the walk is everything. The walk is the most important element. If you want a whole room full of ladies to know what you want without them getting the wrong idea, walk into a singles bar like this. See, this puts out a definite message, you know? It says, listen. Listen, I could care less, but my crotch would like to buy you a beer. <laughs> you gotta do something like that, you know? Hey. Oh. Believe me, these days, women have heard every line there is to say. Guys, you gotta get in there with something visual and distract them. Hey, baby. <laughs> Come here for a second. Yeah, you. Come on over here. Listen. Uh... Listen, do you, uh, do you find it unusually windy today? <laughs> Thank you very much. You guys have been great. Had a wonderful time. Thank you. Put your hands 